away, first wheel melt, got uh, a bunch of bullet casings in the, uh, ooh, that's hot. Got a bunch of bullet casings in the crucible. We'll see how it goes. Okay, my first melt of brass and my first pour. I've got like two and a half nice ingots over here. Smoking hot. They're still glowing red around the edges. Um, it was not without incident. Um, the original plinth I used, that's the remainder of it right there next to that pile of dross, it uh, melted on me. And uh, the crucible tipped over inside there. I fortunately uh, snatched it out and uh, made a new plinth out of a piece of broken off um, of kiln brick. Let me open up the, uh, the foundry and show you what's, uh, what's going on inside. It's got some damage. Okay, so my homemade refractory did not stand up to brass melting temperatures too well. As you can see, it began melting. Not only did the plinth on the bottom melt, but the walls melted too. I have a hard time believing that's the sand in the refractory that's melting, so it must be the uh, perlite. I must have reached the melting point of perlite. And then here's, here's the underside of the lid. So it got kind of melted too. So if I'd only stuck with melting aluminum, maybe this would have worked okay. I don't know, but brass seems to have been a bit too much for it. Now I can clean it up and repair it. I think that's uh, pretty easily done. And uh, I could probably use it again. I hate to see this much damage after each, uh, each brass melt though. Um, but if I stick to melting aluminum, I think it'll be okay. Now I may be able to line it with something. That's a possibility too. I could line it with a better refractory, or I could just rebuild the whole damn thing with the uh, sort of kiln bricks. I don't know if you can see it down there in the daylight that I use for a new plinth down there. Because that's pretty much untouched. It's just sat there and took the heat the whole time. So, well, I'll figure out some way to fix it and uh, work with it. I've got a lot of broken kiln bricks. I might be able to uh, figure out a way to incorporate them into it. Man, it's hot. I need to step back a little bit. So, we had damage, but I had a successful first pour. The first melt in the first pour. There's a lot of brass left in the, in the crucible. I took a while for me to get my act together and uh, get it poured so I think it, the crucible must have cooled off a little bit but uh, well I got some hockey pucks of brass anyway so it's a start man it takes a lot of bullet casings to make that much brass well I guess it makes sense they're mostly mostly empty space so but at least at least my homemade uh, homemade contraption here does get hot enough to melt brass I just got to figure out how to keep it from self-destructing each time I do it. Well, here it is. Not quite three pounds of brass that I cast from uh, a bunch of uh, bullet casings. This bag over here was pretty full of bullet casings. I did take out a lot of the better looking 45 ACP casings uh, to save for my buddy Alan, who's a reloader. But uh, uh, the bulk of this bag, this uh, gallon... Ziploc bag was full of bullet casings, so this is what I got from melting that down. Now the dross I skimmed off the top of the crucible before I poured contains a lot of brass in it. I mean there's a lot of shiny stuff in there. I mean this is not particularly heavy. It doesn't feel like solid brass. It, uh, but there's obviously a lot of brass still in it. I mean you can see there is some. And this, this little bit got stuck in the, uh, the spoon I was using to skim it with. So, uh, maybe some kind of flux would help um, separate the, uh, the brass from the dross a little better. I'll have to research that. Flux might help in the future. Certainly I need to remelt this and get the brass out of it because there's, well, let's see how much there is in there. So eight ounces, oh, yeah, eight ounces, half a pound, basically, and that's just what I skimmed off the top. 
So that's a, that's a lot of brass to throw away with the dross, so I'll find a way to uh, separate that. Certainly I'll remelt this on the next batch. So I've got myself some nice little brass ingots over here, and uh, about destroyed my homemade foundry making them, but I'll see if I can uh, fix that refractory issue and try again. I'm kind of stoked actually that it worked this well. I mean, uh, hey, bullet casings are free on the floor of the uh, range every time I go. I come back with a big bag full. I've got several more gallon bags full. I've actually stopped collecting them because it took me a while to build the foundry and they were just piling up. Now I'll go back to collecting them every time I go to the range so I've got, you know, brass to melt down. And uh, now I just need to uh, start making some molds so I can cast it in. This was just an experiment to see if I could do it. So I am pretty happy with how it turned out in spite of the damage to the foundry. I'll find a way around that in the future and uh, we make them we're making stuff out of brass and aluminum in no time. This is great. Alright, I should probably talk to you about safety for liability reasons. And tell you first off, don't try this at home, okay? But if you must, because I know you're going to anyway, if you must, get some protective equipment. Um, a face mask, a full face mask. Goggles aren't going to cut it when you got molten metal flying around. A full face mask. Uh, good gloves. These actually, these gloves actually are are subpar. I should have had my nice heavy-duty welding gloves on. I was too lazy to go get them, and let me tell you, my fingers got a little toasty during this process. So next time, I will dig up my welding gloves and wear them. They go further up my arms, and they're thicker, heavier leather. Um, these little tongs up front here were just for grabbing and and manipulating the uh, the the little biscuits after I made them, the, the ingots. Um, you know, just because it's not glowing anymore doesn't mean it's not still hot. You don't want to reach down and grab one by mistake. Handle them only with tongs until, you know, you've quenched them in water and they're nice and cold. Otherwise, you're going to lose your finger skin. It's just going to burn right off. Um, you need the proper things for manipulating the crucible. Getting it in and out of the foundry over there and then grabbing the crucible and pouring the metal out. Now the, the little thing on the left is just a set of tongs I made for getting the crucible in and out of the foundry. And in the future what I'll do, because this was just a first test just to see if I could even do anything, in the future what I'll do is I'll set up a camera on a tripod and I'll video the whole process. So you see how all these things are used. But this one here just uh, grabs the crucible around the bottom and allows me to get it in and out of the foundry. I'll put it in the foundry, heat it up, melt the metal, pull it out of the foundry and set it on that little plinth right there next to the foundry. I'll skim the dross off and then I'll use this, this set of tongs right here to pick up the crucible, lock it in place, this slides back and forth and adjusts for the size of the crucible, bigger or smaller. I can lock it in place. That little tab over there prevents the crucible from tipping and I can, I can tilt the whole thing over and pour the metal out of the crucible fairly easily. It worked, it worked really well. And uh, I built both of these myself, exploring my blacksmith uh, skills, or, or trying to develop some blacksmith skills, I guess. Don't look too close to the welds, they're ugly, but they work. Uh, this was made based around a Harbor Freight welding clamp with a lot of other stuff that, uh, that I wound up welding onto it to make it work. And this is just some steel strapping that I, I bent and welded together. And they both work really well for the application. But uh, you need to have the proper equipment if you're going to do this because, you know, don't go trying to grab a crucible full of molten metal with a set of kitchen tongs. No. No, it's not going to work. The crucible's heavy, it's really hot, it's awkward. You need to be further away from it than that, or your gloves are going to catch fire from the radiant heat. And you want to be further away when you're pouring the stuff, too, in case it splashes. And you can't really see me because I'm behind the camera, but I am wearing, you know, I'm covered head to toe. Head to toe. Nothing is exposed, just in case something splashed. 
you know, it would be ideal. I would be weather wearing uh, leather, but I'm not. I'm wearing denim, which, you know, would catch fire probably if I got splashed with molten metal. But at least it might keep the bulk of it from hitting my skin. So, again, if you're going to do this, you need the proper equipment. Don't just, just go out there and cowboy it or you're going to wind up hurting or killing yourself or setting your house on fire or something. Just... You know, and, and one last thing, don't pour molten metal over concrete. That's why I've got uh, the, the biscuit tin over there, or the muffin tin over there in the grass on some old kiln bricks because if, if I spilled the metal on the concrete, it would have spalled and uh, splattered metal all over me. So I poured it over the grass. So keep all this in mind. And like I said, don't do it at home, but if you absolutely have to, be safe about it. Okay? Don't, don't do anything stupid and hurt yourself. So, I want to be the most stupid person doing this, and so far I haven't hurt myself. So, you guys be smarter about it. Alright?